Friday, everybody. It's what we've all been waiting for. Fridays are also amazing because it's a new music Friday and there's definitely some new music out today. Mado finally has his song out with Young Thug. It's called Poetry. The video is out as well. New Mado. He's getting honored today with a proclamation for his own day. That day will be August 16th. Also, French Montana has his new album out today and he'll be up here on Way Up with Angela Yee to talk about it. But in the meantime, let's get the show started the only way we know how. And that is with some love and positivity. Shine a light. 800-292-5150 is a number. Call us up. Let us know who you want to shine a light on. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm a shine. I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. What's up? It's Way Up at Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time to shine a light. That's where we spread some love and positivity. Now, before y'all shine a light, I want to shine a light on Sandra Douglas Morgan. You know, she made history a couple of years ago as the first black woman president of an NFL sports team, the Las Vegas Raiders. Well, most recently, of course, she helped host the Super Bowl. Now, she did an interview with The Cut talking about helping host one of the year's biggest events, but she said that she wishes somebody would have told her to be more vocal in sharing her own goals. Goals, both personal and professional. For her, it was always get a job, put your head down, go to work, do your best, go home, repeat. I always thought, do the job that's given to me and chase those other interests on my own. But if I had shared my goals with a partner at a firm or someone a little more senior to me, maybe I could have had those opportunities earlier. But she did have a lot of opportunities. She was the chairwoman of the Nevada Gaming Control Board. She also was the first black city attorney in the state and commissioner of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. So she has spent a lot out of her professional career working to uplift athletes and sports fans in Nevada. She is a Las Vegas native. Okay. Well, who do you guys want to shine a light on? That was all about Sandra Douglas Morgan. Let's talk to Jamal. Jamal, who do you want to shine a light on? I want to shine a light on myself and my company, Diversity Empowered. I'm a blind financial advisor and me and my team are running a successful financial education company. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations. What's the name of the company? It's Diversity Empowered. We educate in the community on financial education. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I love that. That's a beautiful thing. So you went blind, you learned about finance, and now you are teaching and educating others. You're a blessing. Exactly. Thank you. I, I have a question for you, Angela. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. I've been following you for a minute. I know you do the Wealth Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Is there any way I could come on and talk about building wealth? Um, hold on the line. We'll get my producer to take your information. Uh, okay. And, and you guys can uh, figure that out. How does that sound? All right, no problem. All right, hold on. Uh, that sounds good. All right, well, that was Shine a Light. And when we come back, we have Yeetie. And let's talk about Wendy Williams. You know, that two-part Lifetime docuseries on her life is out tomorrow. And we want to give you guys an update on what she has been diagnosed with. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, Angela's spilling that yee tea. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time for your Yee Tea. Wendy Williams, her new Lifetime documentary, Where is Wendy Williams, is out tomorrow. A film crew started in 2022 chronicling the next stage of Wendy's career, her plans to release a new podcast. But as Wendy Williams' health takes a lead role in this, the whole plans shifted. Uh, production was forced to stop and pivot because she entered a treatment facility for cognitive issues and her family lost contact with her, according to People. Here's a trailer for the film where Wendy Williams' son, Kevin Hunter Jr., is speaking. My mom has done a great job making it seem like everything is okay always, but in reality, there's something wrong going on. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work. I feel as though she was worked enough. I feel like The Guardian has not done a good job of protecting my mom. Well, Wendy Williams has been diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia and apahasia. Apahasia is a disorder that impacts communication, including speech, writing, and the ability to understand language. And dementia is a progressive condition that can result in changes in behavior, speech, and disposition. Imagine what type of hurdle she's having trying to get anything done, uh, knowing that that's what's happening with her health. So you can watch that uh, tomorrow. 
It's a two-part series again on Lifetime. Where is Wendy Williams? And next up, Adrian Peterson is threatening a lawsuit. Now, apparently, he is auctioning off his MVP, Rookie of the Year, and Offensive Player of the Year trophies. It was an estate sale in Houston. But he's saying he's not the person that authorized the sale of these trophies. It was actually a mistake. Here's what he said. I did not authorize the sale of any of my trophies, and I will be taking legal action. Trusting this company without supervision was my mistake. We allowed them to go into several of our storage units with clear instructions. They clearly did something unlawful. He also wants you to make sure that you know he is financially stable. All right. So most of the auction is clothing, shoes, football cleats and other memorabilia. He did not anticipate all of these things being up for auction. All right, well, that is your YT. And when we come back, we have About Last Night. That's where we discuss the things that we did last night. And I definitely had a time yesterday, not just last night, but throughout the day. We'll talk about it. It was hard for me to communicate with anybody because my phone was down. But it's Way Up with Angela Yee. About Last Night is next. Yeah. Last night. So, About Last Night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time for About Last Night. Now, for myself, yesterday I had quite a busy day. Not only did I have to obviously do Way Up with Angela Yee, but I also was a keynote speaker for the Noon Majority Luncheon. The Noon Majority in New York City helps build political power for all women. This actually started back in 2017 as 21 and 21. That's what it was called. New York City Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, Council Member Margaret Chin, and Council Member Elizabeth Crowley wanted to elect 21 additional women to the New York City Council in 2021. That's because there were only 11 women out of 51 at the time. 21 and 21 endorsed 74 women in 35 open council districts and successfully got 31 women into office. So I was the keynote speaker at their fundraiser. You know how important I think local elections are in politics and making sure that we are represented. So being in that room yesterday and being the keynote speaker at that luncheon for their fundraiser was amazing for me. Even hearing stories about some of the issues that may not be brought up if people in those districts aren't represented. You know, one of the uh, council members spoke about a young girl who was in seventh grade who wrote her a letter saying that in shelters, they aren't given access to tampons and pads and things that you need. And something that we think of as simple as that needed to be part of the legislation to make sure that people had access to that. Just think about the kids and they call it period poverty. So those are sometimes things that people may not think about that need to be brought to the attention. But it is an issue that women, you know, see on the forefront most. So there were a lot of different examples that were given yesterday. But I am one of the people who strongly believe that representation matters a lot of that representation is trying to be squashed so we we always have to make sure we participate to help make a difference so shout out to new majority also shout out to pronghorn this is an initiative that was started at diageo they had a cultured spirits virtual event yesterday and i was one of the panelists for that alongside terrence J. pronghorn announced a 200 million dollar fund and a 10-year mission that's going to actually help black owned spirits brands so we love to see it and those are the things that i did yesterday about last night there's more but guys, my head is, in, is spinning right now. I promise y'all next week, I'm taking it easy when I get back from Miami, from the Sobe Wine and Food Festival. But when we come back, we have Tell Us a Secret, 800-292-5150 is a number. Any secret that you have, we want to hear about it. I'm not here to judge you. I just am being nosy. It's way up. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. And part of this show is not just showing love, but also not judging you. Okay? But I will say, it is nice to be able to get those secrets out there into the world. Sometimes it's a burden lifted off of you. Sometimes y'all just entertaining. 800-292-5150 is the number. And remember, you are anonymous. And remember, there is no judgment. Okay? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Tell us a secret. 800-292-5150. Hello, anonymous caller. How are you? How you doing? I'm good. You want to tell me a secret? Yeah, I do. I had sex with my... Well, I don't, I don't mess with him no more, but his sister, uh, my friend's sister. Oh, yeah. And why is that a secret? Just because it's your friend that's, like, uh, off limits? Yeah, and I was big on loyalty, but it was, like, throwing it at me. Kept throwing it at me, just calling me scary or whatever, and I just did it. And I don't mess with him no more, so now I don't care. Okay, that is so funny that we could call somebody scary and then it'll make you be like, I'm not scared. <laughs> yeah, it was like you tested my manhood. <laughs> uh, 
Who knew that that worked? I don't think that works for guys, but I guess it works. Yeah, for I think it does. Uh, do you still talk to her though? At least. Yeah, I do. Ah, oh, so you like her? Why did y'all fall out? Nah, did... she cool. She cool. Like we grew up. I never thought I had a shot, but then I, I did, and I and I, it made me regret like not shooting at her before. Okay, like, so we growing up, but... so you were scary. Yeah, no, nah, I just thought I wasn't the eye fit the part. <laughs> why did you got? Why did you and her brother fall out? Cause it was like some some person who with like the landlord. Like I used to live with him. So I don't I don't really with him. No, I'm sorry, I curse. I don't really mess with him no more. Okay, so it was it's from like living together. Outside, playing a middleman with the landlord. Okay, I get I get it. Some money stuff. All right. Well, thank you for calling and sharing with us. Scary. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Anonymous Carla, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm oh, good. Thank you. You want to tell us a secret? Yes. My secret is I have a really popular Barb account and I troll the other female rappers and no one knows about it, but it's something that I love to do. Oh and my god! I gosh. just Nikki like she pays me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you have a Barb account. We don't know what the account is, but you troll every, like what are some things that you say to these other rappers as an example? Just Petty things, nothing too personal, just things that could, you know, make people laugh. It's not to be extremely mean. It's just to troll a little bit in support of all the Barb's and Nikki. Ooh. And when did you start doing that? Um, probably about a couple years ago. <laughs> has um has Nikki ever tweeted you or re- uh, retweeted you? No, she hasn't, but I wish she would. That would be amazing. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was Tell Us a Secret, 800-292-5150. In case you couldn't get through, you know I always still want to hear your secret. So you can leave a message and we'll play it at the end of the show where you guys have the last word. But when we come back, we have Yee and Club Shay Shay. Another one. We found out some more information. Find out what star athlete lost 40 pounds using cocaine. He revealed this on Club Shay Shay. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's way up. She about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's feeling that Yee Come and get the tea. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time for your Yee Tea. Let's get into Michael Strahan. He has revealed that his daughter, Isabella, who's 19 years old, uh, had a rough setback as she's fighting brain cancer. He told his co host on Wednesday things have been a little rough, and Isabella herself uploaded a video where she said her first round of chemo was one of the worst things she's ever done in her entire life. Here is what she said First round of chemo experiences. One of the worst things I've had done ever in my life. So the first week, I was like, fine, I could still like eat, but um, it just felt weird getting I don't know. You don't really think you're gonna get like poison put through your body. Like <laughs> like poison? Yes. Well, Michael Strahan did share on GMA that the support their family has gotten from their personal circle as well as people online has helped them a lot during this difficult time. So he did thank everybody for that. And Damon Dash is being forced to sell his Rockefeller shares. He does not want to do that. But a New York judge has ordered that Damon Dash has to hand over his shares of Rockefeller because of a refusal to pay a $823,000 judgment to a movie producer, Josh Weber. It was a defamation and copyright infringement lawsuit after a dispute over the film Dare Frank. Now, both Jay-Z and Biggs, who are co-owners of Rockefeller, have objected to that ruling by the judge. They said that the company bylaws that mandate approval from the board of directors to sell off shares. But the judge put in a 15 page decision that shut down those objections and says that Damon Dash's one third ownership of Rockefeller is personal property that can be seized to satisfy his judgments. I wonder if they could lend him the money so that his uh, one third won't be seized if it means enough to them. All right, we'll keep you updated on what happens because maybe there's a way to resolve this. And Johnny Menzel did an interview on Club Shay Shay, of course, and revealed that after being cut by the Browns in 2015, he lost 40 pounds because of his excessive cocaine use. Here's what he said. I was 210 pounds when I left Cleveland. I was 170 pounds sitting in Vegas that August, that September, October, whatever it was later in that year. How you lose 40 pounds? You're on a strict diet of blow. You know, previously he revealed that he had a plan to kill himself following his departure from the Browns. He was self-sabotaging. But in that conversation that he had with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay, he also, by the way, apologized to Drake for the Drake curse. He said, you know, he's the most positive energy, the greatest aura 
And maybe he picks it wrong sometimes in the people teams or whatever it is that he bets, but that's life. I mean, when you bet, you are betting against somebody, right? All right, well, that is your Yeti. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines. They're flying under the radar. And these Stanley Tumblers, there is now a new lawsuit. People were paying so much money for these trendy, oversized Stanley Thermos cups. They were viral. It was a must-have item. And now there's two lawsuits over these Stanley Cups. All right, we'll talk about it in Under the Radar. It's way up. Check the news. I got news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's a Friday, and it's time for Under the Radar. Now, there's a new lawsuit that says that those Stanley Tumblers that people were going crazy for that went viral on social media was a must-have item. Uh, they failed to disclose the presence of lead in those Stanley Tumblers. It says the company knew or reasonably should have known about this lead issue for years, but chose to conceal it from the public, presumably to avoid losing sales. And by the way, you can still get these cups on sale online. So uh, several customers said they performed at home tests on the cups with some allegedly testing positive for lead. Stanley did release a statement. They said the material used for the insulation seal at the bottom of the products does contain some lead, but it's covered with stainless steel and no lead is present on the surface of any Stanley product that comes into contact with the consumer nor the contents of the product. I mean, it sounds like the best thing to do would be to make these lead-free, period. Okay? And the FDA has greenlit a new drug on Friday, last Friday, and that could be life-changing for people with severe food allergies. Zolair is approved to help reduce severe allergic reactions to certain foods in adults and children over the age of one. That includes nuts, though, by the way. Those nut allergies are no joke. People really die from their allergies to nuts. This will provide a treatment option to reduce the risk of harmful allergic reactions among certain patients with IgE-mediated food allergies. It won't eliminate your allergies, but it will allow you to consume food allergens freely and repeated use will help reduce the health impact if accidental exposure occurs. Right now, there's no cure for food allergies. The only known treatment is avoidance of that food and then having that EpiPen in case of an immediate emergency. And Toyota has recalled about 280,000 pickups and SUVs because the engine may not disengage entirely when in neutral. So it kind of goes forward a little bit. It creeps forward at a low speed when it's on a flat surface and no brakes are applied. And so that's increased risk of a crash. I used to dream a lot that my car brakes wouldn't work. So imagine your car is in neutral. You think it's not moving, but it's creeping forward. So that recall is one of three in the United States that the company announced on Wednesday. They're also recalling another 19,000 vehicles over a software problem. That means the rear view image may not display within the period of time required by U.S. safety regulations. And then 4,000 Toyota Camry and Camry hybrid vehicles are being recalled over safety issues with the head restraints on the rear fold down seats that increase the risk of injury during certain collisions. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your Under the Radar. You know, we got the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. Plus, it's a Friday, New Music Friday, and French Montana is going to be joining us. It's Way Up. Way Up. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time for your Yee Tea. James Brown's daughters, Deanna Brown Thomas and Yama Brown, have talked about how they were able to forgive their dad after they saw him beat their mother, Deirdre Jenkins, when they were young. They told People that it hurt them seeing their father be violent towards their mother. They said, when you see a family member being hurt, you're not feeling the best about the person that's hurting them. I was flat out upset, mad with my dad at that moment. I still go back to that place every now and then. Not to belittle my dad, but flashing back over my own life and the domestic violence situation in my life thinking how much of that shaped me you know people don't understand how things like this really transfer down to your children from what they see and what they witness sometimes it's the exact opposite and if for guys if their dad does things like that they're the exact opposite sometimes they emulate that behavior but for young women for the fact that she was dealing with her own domestic violence situation you know, after seeing her dad do that, you just don't know what's going to happen for generations to come. 
Now, Yama said she was only six years old and she intervened. And she said it's an unfortunate time in anybody's situation, anybody's life. If they've ever had to go through domestic violence, they know what that's like. And it shows that he was human because he was flawed. But it's also a time to show grace. That's how I think about it. Ooh, but she also did say uh, both the daughters said their father was never violent with them. But the other daughter, Deanna, said there was a time when I didn't like my father. I didn't like him because of this type of behavior. I saw a lot growing up. I heard a lot growing up that could have damaged me for a lifetime. He never had any type of rage towards us because we were his children. That was a situation between a husband and a wife. That's a different type of love. Now, Yama said that James Brown did apologize to their mother, not to say that that was something that erased everything, but knowing he had compassion in his heart. And my mom was receptive to that. So shout out to Yama and Deanna Brown Thomas for being honest and speaking their truth. I think that can be really helpful for a lot of people who have witnessed things like that. All right. And Normani has announced her debut solo album is called Dopamine. I can't believe that she hasn't put out an album yet. She's been putting out singles. I think she's super dope. You know, she got started with Fifth Harmony. She was always my favorite. So I'm excited. But she posted crying typing this right now. Dopamine, the album. We don't know what the release date is, but we do have some artwork. And Jay Farrow is going to be hosting a new Fox game show called The Quiz with Balls. It will pit brains against balls. It's a high stakes quiz show with a physical competition. Each episode has two families competing for $100,000 in a battle of the balls. This could have went either way. This is actually a show that premiered in the Netherlands and it did really well. So now it's here in the United States. And you can expect to see it premiere this summer. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your Yee Tea. And when we come back, we have new music. It is a Friday. We'll tell you what's out, what you should be listening to. It's Way Up. What's up is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time for Ask Yee. This is where you guys call in, and I give you some advice. And today we have a caller from our voicemail. Listen to this. I have a question. I have been dating this guy for two years, and next month will be our anniversary. About two weeks ago, I found out that he was cheating on me. Um, he pocket dialed me while he was with someone else, and I heard the actual act on my voicemail. I have ended the relationship, but I'm still so madly in love with this man, and it's tearing me apart, and I just don't know what to do. Can you help me, please? I have to be honest, the very same thing happened to me. I didn't hear them having sex, but my ex-boyfriend pocket dialed me, and I heard him with another woman talking, having a whole conversation I was actually in the car with one of my friends, so we both heard it because it was on the Bluetooth in the speaker in the car. Um, and I did hang up and call him back and he denied it and then pretended he was at his friend's house. But anyway, the story ends like this, okay? I did give him another chance after that, even though I knew that he was lying and cheating. And guess what? He did it again and again and again. And so the question is... You know, being madly in love with somebody and knowing that you've heard that, I don't know how you're going to get over that. Because when you're madly in love with somebody and they do something like that, it is so hard to fathom why. And I'm not saying that people can't change. They can, but they have a lot to prove. And he would have a lot to prove to you. Now, I think ripping that Band-Aid off and actually breaking up with somebody is a great first step. But you have to be patient with yourself and know that, of course, you still love this person. Of course, you're upset. Of course, you're hurt. Of course, you want him back. Those are all normal things. You can't turn your feelings off. But you also have to know every day is going to get better. And every day that you're not being disrespected or knowing that you're laying in bed and your man is out possibly cheating on you. You know, those are another day that um, we we get a little bit stronger every single day that passes and every minute that passes. And so I just want to say to you that unless he shows some tremendous effort in trying to repair things and show you how he can fix and change things, which I think shouldn't be anything that he should easily be able to come to you and say, you know, you, you have to stay away from him because otherwise he'll think that he can just keep on doing what he's doing because you're not going to leave him anyway. I would say you need to lean into the fact that you're hurt and that's fine. You need to make sure that you keep yourself occupied. I gave myself a rule when I was with my friends. I was like, do not let me continue to talk about him all the time let's talk about other things that was the only way that I was going to be able to move on and get over it and it did help me tremendously so I am wishing you all the best and every day is going to be hard and that's fine and who knows what the future might hold because one thing I also learned is that later on down the line when you find the right person none of that from the past matters anymore so 
the only way you'll find the right person is to cut out all that negativity and black out all of the things that you don't need. And he sounds like something you don't need in your life. All right. That is your answer for Ask Ye. 800-292-5150 is a number in case you couldn't get through. And French Montana is going to be joining us when we come back. I wonder what type of advice French would give. Because I feel like he's been that guy that's butt dialed somebody before. It's way up. We about to do this. Yeah. Yo. More Way Up with Angela Yee on now. You know who it is. You know who it is. Let's get it going. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And the changed new Mano. New is here. And French Montana's in the building. What's up, man? What's up? Well, Mac and Cheese 5 is officially out now. Mm -hmm. So congratulations on this project. You've been consistent, bro. Thank you. Let me ask you, though. Do you feel like people give you a credit for that? You ain't gonna get no credit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you from Brooklyn, man. You know what Big's at. And, you know, you know, bite till somebody kill you. Oh, don't say that. It's real talk. Because I feel like the intro alone just says a lot. Like, yeah. these are the questions that you get asked all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, things that people have been yeah. saying. Yeah. In interviews and, yeah, things that people say. And I see it's more rare for you to, like, respond to certain things now, yeah, too. Yeah. You know what it is? I stopped doing interviews <laughs> and people... You know, instead of me doing the interview, I was like, you know what? Let me just interview myself for the first song because mm. I know exactly That's what, what people, it felt like. What people want to hear, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like, you know, when you're at a certain level, man, like we ain't even trying to straighten out no rumors, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you're you right. heard, you heard, man. No, like whatever. Right. You right. know what else I I learned too? Lawsuits. I, uh -huh. first of all, for the first time in my life, have been getting, like, people trying to sue for things. Yeah, I just I just saw somebody try to sue me for my dog biting him for $2 million. Yeah, uh -huh. I just saw I that, too. <laughs> dinosaur bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but, Yo, bro. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you know, I'm never in my house, so I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't, like, I don't know what the situation is. Like, I hear my, I was like, yo. What's going on? So I don't, you know, I don't want to speak on. I don't like speaking on like that. But right. When you speak about about death and all that, right? We in a time right now where a lot of rappers is dying. You mm -hmm. had a video shoot. I think you was in Miami and some yeah, shots yeah. got fired. Like, do you yeah. think about that? Of course, I'm traumatized. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm traumatized. So think about it like this: Imagine getting shot at, not knowing what the what the coincidence is, and after you get shot at, you get sued. So the people that got shot at treating you like you the one that that, that shot them, when you the got shot at the right. same way, so right. it's like, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's make, you, like, make you make you don't even want to come around people. That's what I'm saying. And that's why you said your circles a lot smaller. Yeah, it became yeah. a dot. Yeah, it's a dot. Right now, I'm here with Mano and French Montana's in the building. And now, let's talk about the album, because I see, you know, we were talking about earlier, it was supposed to come out in January. Yeah. We saw a different track listing yeah. um, than what we see now. So, tell us some things that happened, because I see, like, it did. I, I never put out that track list. Yeah, I never even <laughs> so said So, all those songs real? Um, some like the Big Pun Joe? Yeah, I got a song with Drake called Big Pun. That one, um, I'm in the tuck. What about the uh, shot the Drake with, uh, with Fabian in them in future? Nah, that's not that even one, a song. That's not even a song. <laughs> Hold Ty on, dollar sign, Lil TJ. It's not even a song. Lil TJ hit me like, "Yo, we got a song." I'm like, "Yo, bro, you know damn well me and you and Ty dollar sign don't got a song." He was like, "Nah, I thought you chopped some." <laughs> I'm like, "Nah." I'll clear that. Nah, that's yeah, not a song either. Nah. That's crazy. That's, Hell no. that's so funny that somebody put together a whole fake track list. That's wild. Nah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> me, Chris Brown, Capella, Capella Gray hit me too. Like, yo, we got a record. I'm like, no, bro. <laughs> They're cool with it. Why, did, why didn't you put the Drake song on here? Because I saw people were saying, what happened to that? Um, Because we got a documentary coming out together, and I feel like it's a better look that we dropped. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, you know, and it's, and it's more of a summertime record, a big punt. It's, it's, we call it a big punt for a special reason. Okay, we can't wait to hear that one. Yeah, yeah. You probably got so many songs in the tuck, too. Yeah, yeah, And with Kanye, because he's on a couple of songs here, was that specifically for your album, or were you guys working, and then you were like, I'm going to take this for mine, because I know Kanye's um, been... I think we yeah, we always just working. Like, um, he had locked down a hotel for like 30 days, and we just locked in and made a bunch of songs. Mm -hmm. And when it came time for me to drop the album, I was just like, I was going through records. I'm like, yo, I love these right here, because... There was a lot of records that I had that I didn't put on Mac and Cheese 5 because it's, it's street mixtape, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it was like, a lot of things don't fit. So I just grabbed, like, because he got even a sound on his new album now that I, that I love. But, you know, with Mac and Cheese 5, it's like sand pools and it's just like the boom bap and mm -hmm. it's just like back back to the street. So right. it was these two records I love and I put them on here. Fresh Montana, his new album is out today. And we have more with him when we come back. It's Way Up. More Way Up with Angela Yee on now. You know who it is. 
What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Mano's in the building, and so is France Montana. It's New York heavy. Creation of kings everywhere. The Coke boys. Coke you boys. <laughs> Creation of kings everywhere. Yeah, that's Truly it. humble Just so under people God. know that Coke stands for Creation of Kings Everywhere. Yeah, it's I mean, not what you think it is. Exactly. <laughs> you, don't, I, you don't ask Coca-Cola what this stands for. Well, it actually used to be in Coca-Cola Absolutely. early on. Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wow. that's a terrible yeah. example. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. So you know something the, original, that. the original Coca-Cola. <laughs> That's the original Dana boy. <laughs> what about all these all these Hollywood women you lay down with? Do huh? you know? <laughs> <laughs> donkey. <laughs> what about the Hollywood donkeys? Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh my God. Snipe, snipe. I'm a single man. But I'm just saying you reference it a lot on the on the album, you know. Oh, I ain't pulling all these Hollywood uh, ladies. Night, night. No, I'm just saying Donkeys. I have my fun in Hollywood. Are there times when you're like, I can't believe that I'm with this person? Um, yeah, I mean, I have my fan share. I have, I have times when I was watching TV and I had the person next to me. <laughs> like it wasn't nothing wrong with that. Really? You know, I have, to, I have my fan share. I, you know, I, I went, I went to Hollywood and I have fun. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying I'm still having fun. Hollywood or reality show women? Um. I just love the person for who they are. You know what I'm we get what we get when we get it. We get what we get when we get it. Prince been laying low. I mean, he just got something on. It's something up his sleeve. I just feel like sometimes when you deal with um with these powerful women and this and that, it just takes away from what God truly blessed you with. You know what I'm saying? The media eyes. You know what I mean? You want to, like, I want people to focus on Mac and Cheese 5. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm here with Mano and French Montana's in the building. This is a nice moment for me, though, too, because I'm from New York and I've known both of you guys from my serious days. That's yeah. Right. You know, and this this year trouble. is like my 20 years in radio. Yeah. All the way up. You know, and I mm-hmm. just feel like I remember friends coming to the bowling parties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, early on and you Hell and Marissa yeah. Mendez running around. I'll be watching y'all show. I was like, yo, I gotta do, I gotta do this on album release. I was like, like, yo, nah, nah, may no Angela. Nah, yeah. this is it's a yeah. double trouble. Nah. That's, that's what I thought the show was going to be called. Double, double trouble? trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the only person getting in trouble is me because she consistently been getting me in trouble for years. Nah, <laughs> but it's your own fault. Nah, honestly, it's a home run. Yeah, you said it's a home run? Yeah, this show's a home run. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. And so it is a full circle moment for me, like just having, thinking about, and y'all all, both also look the same. You know, yeah, some people change. aren't aging that yeah. well. So yeah. But yeah. both we, of y'all, we do like side by sides of back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, And where y'all are now. No, like, we look better. What you mean? I think the goal in life is always to, of course, like age, I think, is a blessing. Yeah. But you it's know? also energy too, though. Yeah. You got to be careful with your energy. Like, the mm-hmm. energy that you that you put out there in your circle. We talked about having, a, you know, a tight circle and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And taking care of yourself, you know, at the end of the day. You Do know? you feel like there was a time you had bad energy around you and you had to fix things up? Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody had bad energy Absolutely. around you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I at think. a point. Yeah. 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 Everybody doesn't get out of it, though. You yeah. learn from it, though. Like how homeboy said, uh, Medea, who was like, you know, when, when the rocket go up and then people can't go up that high and they detach and they come down and you keep going up. That's real talk. Did you say like Medea said? What's, uh, what's his name? Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. I'm so mad that you just said like Medea. Medea. Yeah, because I'm the <laughs> same person though. I know, but, but it's, it's the same person. But, but Medea said Medea. that though. Okay. No, but it's crazy because I, cause I know Medea more than I know Tyler Perry. <laughs> Because you watch Medea so much in your movies, you're like... It's a real person, man. It's a real person. Well, congratulations again. I'm so happy that you came. This is your first time on Way Up. Yeah, um, yeah. Double trouble. Yeah. So we appreciate that. Fat Joy, come out y'all all the way up. I'm going to be honest. I thought of that, but I really got it from um, Big Sean. I'm um, way up. I feel blessed. I'm just joking, man. You all right. You all right. You got to explain yourself. But I think it's both. I, I think it's both. I ain't coming to sue you. You try to get me sued. <laughs> 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 all right. Another ass. lawsuit. You know, I ain't coming to sue you. You know what, Ash? We about to send myself. this injunction. <laughs> <laughs> get you out of here. Mac and Cheese 5 is out now. Congratulations on everything. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Amazing. It's going to be a vibe for you guys to watch. Watch, and I cannot wait to hear what else you have next and to see the documentary when it's out. Yes. It's Is it going to be June. in theaters or streaming? Both. In okay. June. In June? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah dope. Thank you so much to French Montana for joining us. You can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With Ye. And when we come back, you guys have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. 
is the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And oh my gosh, happy Friday, you guys. I'm heading off to Miami. The Sobe Wine and Food Festival is in Miami this weekend. So I'm excited. Um, shout out to my guy, Chef JJ. He actually has an event that I'm co-hosting with him. And that's going to be at the Eden Rock tomorrow. It's called The Cookout. And you guys can get tickets if you go to the website for the Sobe Wine and Food Festival and look up The Cookout for Saturday from 4 to 7 at the Eden Rock. Make sure you guys come out and join us. Y'all know I love the Wine and Food Festival in New York. This is my first time going to the one in South Beach. So I'm ready to have a good time. And after that, I'm going to start my detox. I promise you guys. Again, thanks to French Montana for joining us today. His album is out right now. Shout out to my guy, Mano, one more time. He is getting his proclamation today no in Brooklyn Mano. for his own day on August 16th. But he also has a new song out today. Make sure y'all check that out. Stream it, download it. Whatever it is you got to do is him and Young Thug. It's called Poetry. And of course, you guys have the last word. Yeah, I got a secret to tell, man. One day I met this girl at the club, right? Nice looking girl. Watch the band. We did our thing. We went to the crib, you know. We got it on, you know. A couple of months go past. I go to my family reunion. I see her with the same family reunion t-shirt on that I got. Whole time she my whole cousin. I ain't never said nothing to nobody before. I felt so embarrassed. And no, I did not continue to have sex with a Mano. I just want to shine a light on all the ladies that have been cheated on inside their life. And I'm just saying that because a female had called me about her. Man, this was a year ago that me and this man was messing around. But I did tell her we messed around. I ain't tell her all the truth. But she needs to know that her man ain't sh- Well, yeah, I want to shine a light on to all the females around the world that have been cheated on that don't deserve it. We love you. And there's somebody out here that loves you. Going way up, turn up, turn up. with Angela Yee.